Good evening. I wanted to welcome everyone here tonight for our community discussion for our presidential search with um, Regent Mike Worthy. Um, before we get started, I just wanted to give you a few housekeeping items to pay attention to. If you haven't already, go ahead and go up to Tools and check the Audio Wizard setting. Um, this will make sure that your um, everything is working so you're able to hear our presentation um, as we begin. You also want to notice you have a chat box available to you. Feel free to share your thoughts and your ideas, any questions you may have in that space. Um, you also notice there's a little hand icon um, in your little chat area. If you click on that, a little red hand will pop up. So if there's something you want to make note of or um, propose, you can always use that tool. Um, and without further ado, I want to go ahead and take a moment to introduce um, Regent Mike Worthy and tell you a little bit about him before we begin. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce him. Um, he is serving as the chair of the WSU Presidential Search Advisory Committee. Today's session is part of a series of statewide forums and listening sessions that Regent Worthy and other members of the Presidential Search Advisory Committee have held over the past couple of weeks to ensure that this search is well informed by a wide variety of views from WSU stakeholders, including faculty, staff, students, alumni, community leaders, and other friends of WSU. Regent Worthy joins us tonight seeking your thoughts um, about any considerations that are important in the selecting of WSU's next president. Um, so with that, I turn it over to Regent Mike Worthy, and I hope you enjoy the discussion, and thank you for your time. Well, good evening. Thank you very much, Harmony. I appreciate it very much. Uh, I'm delighted to be here for the first time uh, communicating with you all at the Global Campus. I have a short presentation that I'd like to do for you, about 20 minutes of um, information about the current state of Washington State University and some facts and figures that are uh, really relevant to our discussion around uh, who should be the next president of Washington State University. After the presentation, I'll welcome any uh, comments you have, things that we should keep in mind as we search for a new president, and any questions you have about the process or about the information that's communicated in the presentation. So without further ado, let's um, move on through uh, the presentation that uh, we have for you tonight. Uh, also remember that I'm not particularly efficient with this technology, so here we go. Uh, first of all, here are the first 10 presidents of Washington State University, a distinguished group of individuals. They're all men. Make note of that. Um, maybe that will change in the future. Um, you can look at uh, the history and some brief commentary about the tenure of each of these presidents at WSU's website. So I would welcome you to go there and read just a little bit about some of the earlier leaders of WSU. I'd like to extend my thanks to interim president uh, Dan Bernardo, who had been provost of WSU until the passing of Elson Floyd. Uh, I was delighted uh, to have a conversation with uh, Dr. Bernardo to learn that he was um, more than willing to serve in an interim president capacity. At that particular time, back in July, it was not his intention to seek uh, the job as president of WSU. And we very much appreciated his thoughtful reasoning around that. He wanted to be sure that WSU was able to seek a new president without um, people believing there was an internal candidate that, um, that might have the inside track or how you might want to characterize that. Uh, he has done excellent work at Washington State University and intends to return to his position as provost um, once a new president has been identified. So my thanks uh, to Dr. Bernardo. He's doing a great job. Uh, and um, I... Uh, I'm looking forward to working with him at WSU for years to come. So let's talk about some particular um, uh, things to know about Washington State University. Uh, 30,000 students system-wide in Washington, the largest enrollment in the history of the university. The freshman class of 4,727, uh, it's the largest freshman class in the history of WSU. 81% of those new freshmen are from Washington State. Uh, that's particularly relevant. Uh, we consider as a part of WSU's land-grant mission um, local students, uh, Washingtonians, having access to higher education is one of our critical goals, um, and we're very excited about um, that um, record high for um, Washingtonians in our freshman class. I'm also delighted, uh, particularly uh, talking to this audience, 
um, to let you all know that the students enrolled in the Global Canvas have exceeded 3,000, and that enrollment is up um, almost 13 percent. So we're very excited about um, this uh, um, delivery of um, degree opportunities as well. And uh, you're intimately familiar with that opportunity. And uh, this part of WSU continues to grow uh, just as the others have. 36% of our new freshman class are students of color. And 41% of them are the first in their family to attend college. So these are also uh, continuing indicators of um, access to higher education, um, and we're doing everything we can to make it affordable to Washington students for sure. And as uh, you may know, uh, there was a uh, um, record-breaking uh, tuition reduction this um, year and also another one planned for next year. So um, we're thankful for the leadership of Elson Floyd in advocating for affordable tuition um, and continuing to expand Washington State University's enrollment. So let's talk about research a little bit. Uh, recently, the Carnegie Foundation indicated Washington State University as a very high research activity institution. And in a nutshell, what that means is WSU is one of the premier research universities in the country. Uh, we joined an elite group um, that essentially, as I said, was identified by the Carnegie Foundation. Uh, $395 million in research expenditures at WSU in 2013, $36 million from the United States Department of Agriculture in fiscal year 2014. And then you can see on the slide there are some other uh, significant grants um, that have been won by WSU in advancing um, our research enterprise. As we think about the kind of research that Washington State University will pursue in the future, um, under the direction of VP for Research, Chris Keene. An evaluation took place um, uh, throughout the WSU system, and we tried to focus in on the things where we were particularly proficient and where we had enjoyed some success. And we started to narrow down the areas that we would hope to focus our research efforts on in the future. And you can see this list that we've come to call the grand challenges in our research enterprise. And behind each one of these bullet points, there's a group of faculty members and researchers who are pursuing grant funding to expand research in those particular areas. Uh, the way we look at it is um, we have the best opportunity to provide great return um, and impact in our society if we focus on the things where we have already demonstrated that we have expertise and, and professionals that are um, uh, some of the finest um, in their areas of expertise. So um, uh, the research enterprise at WSU is alive and well, growing, and focused on um, outcomes for the future. WSU uh, is truly a statewide institution. Um, you know of our branch campuses in Spokane, in Pullman, in the Tri-Cities, in Vancouver, and now at North Puget Sound in Everett. Um, you can see uh, the research stations of our cooperative extension outlets. Um, we have uh, 24 small business development centers. Um, and certainly, uh, through this vehicle, the global campus, uh, WSU's reach continues to expand. And it's important for a new president to realize that Washington State University um, is statewide and global. And we're going to continue to grow with that notion in mind, uh, not centric to any particular geographic area. Relative to economic development, um, a year ago, uh, a third party outside the university, a firm called Community Attributes Incorporated, um, conducted a research study about the economic impact emanating from Washington State University's activities. And I'm delighted to say that $3.3 billion in economic activity um, have evolved from uh, WSU activities, both um, our employment base, um, the attendant um, opportunities relative to research and other activities. So clearly, investments made by the state legislator and donors and others to WSU provide a great return on those investments. Um, and we're uh, focused on continuing to expand WSU's economic impact in the future. We recently completed a capital campaign, $1 billion, raised for a variety of WSU programs and initiatives, $331 million from alumni, five of the largest gifts in the history of the university, 444 new endowed scholarships 
and 33 endowed faculty positions. So uh, the um, significance of that achievement um, says a lot about the support for WSU and for a new president contemplating uh, coming to WSU, uh, this is the clearest indicator that there is widespread private sector support for WSU and um, obviously we're going to continue um, that part of the resource development uh, for university programs. Um, there's a new campus of WSU that um, has commenced in Everett. Um, Washington State University was asked by the state legislature um, to take responsibility for a collaboration there known as the University Center. Um, eight um, universities from across the state offering programs, degree programs in Everett. And uh, now under the direction of WSU as uh, the, the principal director of that activity, um, and our evolution now with increasing numbers of WSU students in Everett um, in a variety of degree programs um, and you can see them there on the slide, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, hospitality and business management. So um, we're very excited about uh, the footprint in Everett and the folks in Snohomish County have waited for a long time for a dedicated four-year university to be there. Uh, and we're delighted uh, to be meeting uh, the needs of uh, the citizens of Snohomish County. As you may know, in the last legislative session, uh, the legislature approved Washington State University's request to move forward with establishing a new medical school. Um, we did receive the legislature's approval. We're in the process of seeking preliminary accreditation to uh, train doctors, primarily uh, the college headquartered in Spokane, and it has been designated and named in honor of Elson Floyd, the Elson S. Floyd College of Medicine. So uh, we're very proud of that opportunity evolving um, headquartered in Spokane, but it's a model that would allow students um, uh, to be throughout the state um, learning um, the healthcare uh, delivery in clinics and hospitals in all of the communities uh, where Washington State University has a presence. We're very excited about this opportunity headquartered in Spokane. Uh, last month, uh, the founding dean of uh, the Elson S. Floyd College of Medicine was engaged, uh, Dr. John Tom Kobiak, and he'll start full-time in December um, leading the effort um, toward um, accreditation of uh, the Elson S. Floyd College of Medicine. We're also in a discussion with the Bellevue College in Bellevue for um, a possible collaboration to expand degree programs um, in East King County. Um, Bellevue College is one of the largest community colleges in our state, over 25,000 students, and it's simply um, our objective to try to get together with the leadership of Bellevue College and determine how more Washington State University bachelor's programs can be offered um, in collaboration with Bellevue College. Uh, we were encouraged uh, by state legislators and other community leaders to enter into that conversation with Bellevue College. Uh, there's a lot of things to figure out. Um, it's a complex uh, joint venture, if you will, uh, that has a fair amount of politics involved, but we're going to continue those conversations. The leadership of both, both institutions see the opportunities that lie ahead for uh, some type of a collaboration, and we'll continue that discussion and hopefully um, uh, continue uh, to deliver increasing numbers of bachelor's degrees uh, for students in Washington State. So let's talk about the search process so far. Um, in July, the Board of Regents began quietly discussing what the best practices were for a um, nationwide search for a new president. We believe that it was disrespectful for us to launch that search in a public way before um, we had properly recognized the achievements of Elson Floyd. So late in August, when memorial services uh, for President Floyd were, were concluding, uh, we began a more public uh, uh, phase of that process. In the first part of September, the Board of Regents engaged a firm known as Isaacson Miller that uh, operates out of San Francisco, one of the preeminent um, uh, search firms in the country relative to higher education professionals. Um, they've been extremely helpful uh, to us in sort of evaluating what our process should be uh, they um, will enable us to access many higher education professionals across the country. They have placed hundreds of university presidents and have done seven searches in recent years for WSU at dean or vice president level positions. 
So they're very familiar with WSU, um, a firm with great contacts across the country, um, and truly um, uh, the, um, the industry leaders with regard to higher education searches, so we're delighted to be working with them. Uh, later in September, uh, the Board of Regents appointed a 25-member Presidential Search Advisory Committee, and I want to underline the word advisory for a moment and make sure there's no confusion. Uh, the Board of Regents has uh, the ultimate responsibility for hiring the President of Washington State University. But considering um, all of the um, work that will need to be done to properly evaluate candidates and to um, have a lot of folks who are very familiar with WSU um, have an opportunity to discuss and interview those candidates, um, we ultimately selected a 25-member committee made up of faculty, students, university administrators, uh, deans, um, uh, donors, um, alumni, and some other community leaders that had unique skills with respect to what we would need to uh, put in a room for such a committee to properly evaluate the candidates for president of Washington State University. We're very happy with that group of um, uh, friends of WSU. Uh, they have done an extraordinary amount of work in the last 45 days in preparation for um, uh, moving um, the advisory uh, committee activities along and ultimately finding uh, the next great president for Washington State University. So my thanks to all of those uh, members of the Presidential Search Advisory Committee, and I can see that some of them are online with us tonight. Um, we embarked on a process two weeks ago of holding 21 listening sessions across the state, similar to this forum. Uh, we went to Vancouver, the Tri-Cities, uh, Pullman, of course, Spokane, Bellevue, Everett, uh, and Seattle, and conducted sessions like this where we simply made this update presentation and then asked the friends of WSU, what should we be looking for um, in a new president? And we framed that discussion in three primary questions. First question is, what are the opportunities that lie ahead for Washington State University? Uh, in five, ten years in the future, WSU will continue to grow and uh, there will be many new opportunities ahead for WSU. So uh, the importance of this question is when we're looking for a new president, we need to find someone who not only can manage the enterprise as it is today, but also have the skills and ability to move us um, toward our opportunities and uh, to manage the institution um, uh, as it becomes um, um, increasingly prominent um, in the state, region, and uh, around the world. Second, what are the challenges that the president will face in that process? It's appropriate for us to sort of look at ourselves a little bit and be candid and forthright with candidates about what the challenges they'll face as president of Washington State University look like. And at the same time, we should be evaluating the credentials of those candidates to determine whether or not they have the skills and attributes to overcome the challenges that they will face um, if they were to get the job. The third question uh, that we're looking for feedback or related to is how should we measure the success of WSU's next president? Uh, it's appropriate when you're talking to somebody about um, a job as big as that one to make sure there's a clear understanding of what our expectations are for a new president, um, what things we expect of them, um, what initiatives we expect uh, that they'll be able to continue and to launch. And it's really important to be forthright uh, with that candidate about what the Cougar Nation expects of them. So those three questions really frame the input that we're hoping to get from you tonight along with any other questions or feedback you have about our search for a new president. Um, what are our opportunities over the next five to ten years? What are the challenges uh, that WSU's president will face? And how should we measure the performance of WSU's next president? So with that, uh, those are our primary questions. And, and uh, what I'd like to do now is cause you to think for just a few moments about those questions. And then if you can uh, simply uh, chat them to me, I'm going to repeat the question back um, or your comment, whatever it may be, and then uh, we'll make note of all these, communicate them to the Search Advisory Committee and our search consultants, and incorporate your thoughts and views um, into uh, the process for seeking our next president. 
So who's out there that's got uh, comments or questions about the process? Takes a few minutes to ponder it, I know. So uh, here's, uh, here's a statement coming in. I would love to see a president that takes pride in increasing campus diversity and inclusion on campus. Um, absolutely agree. Um, as I said earlier, uh, the freshman class is one of the most diverse in the history of the university. 27% uh, of WSU's student body at large are students of color. So uh, that's absolutely a positive trend. And in the many other ways uh, of having an inclusive, inviting, safe campus, uh, we're all in agreement that a president should have that objective in mind. What other thoughts? Okay, let's see here. Uh, next question is, or statement, it would be great to see a president who loves the Cougs. Um, I would, um, I guess, presume by reference that when you say love the Cougs, you mean the athletic teams. And I'm going to say that it is important for the president of WSU to have a very clear understanding of intercollegiate athletics. Um, um, if, for any of us who have been Cougar fans for any length of time, um, it's sort of a love-hate relationship sometimes, but we always come home uh, to supporting the Cougars, and um, we really do believe a president for WSU um, uh, will catch that fever as we have it, and also um, we'll need to find someone who really appreciates and respects uh, the magnitude of intercollegiate ac athletics as a member of the Pac-12 conference. Uh, that's definitely an objective for sure. Uh, so here's a, uh, here's a comment from Andrew, as you pointed out. I'd like to reiterate the importance of maintaining the focus on research, continuing statewide expansion to include the partnerships with community and colleges, and to continue to expand online degree offerings. Um, you're absolutely right. Um, we're uh, definitely trying uh, to deliver on our land-grant mission, but also to advance and elevate the type of research that's being done at Washington State University. Both of those objectives need to continue. Uh, and frankly, we're very proud of the success uh, of the um, global campus, um, and you should expect that our online degree offerings will continue to expand. Okay. Uh, so here's uh, another statement from uh, Andrew. Thanks for your feedback. The next WSU president should be able to serve as a skilled negotiator in order to lobby our state government to adequately support higher education as well as to be able to continue the expansion throughout Washington and globally, enabling WSU to continue to achieve its mission of making higher education accessible. Uh, couldn't have said it better, Andrew. If we may, we'll quote you when we talk to our first candidate for president. I should also tell you that our expectation is that we'll have between 15 and 20 highly qualified candidates. Uh, we'll review their credentials, and the committee will narrow that list to the top three or four who would then um, have an opportunity to interview with the Board of Regents in a final selection. So uh, here's, a, uh, here's a question from Josh. Is this strictly an external search or will the committee vet in-house leadership as well? Um, our expectation is that we'll entertain applications from anyone um, and certainly if there are any leaders here on campus that would be interested in um, putting their hat in the ring, uh, we would give them special uh, consideration. Uh, as I earlier pointed out, um, Dan Bernardo, as interim president, had indicated he chose not to be a uh, candidate but to go back to his role as provost. But if there are other professionals on campus who have interest in the job, we would certainly uh, look kindly on their applications. I would also like to see, this is a question from, or a statement from John, I would also like to see the new president to continue to be inclusive of the global campus on all events as we grow significantly each year. Um, that's absolutely right, John. Um, and you know, tonight's a little bit of an example of that, but from the very beginning, um, uh, in my conversations with Dave Soleil, uh, we have always intended uh, to include feedback from the global campus in our search process. Um, and um, it's true that sometimes, uh, because of the virtual nature of um, your affiliations, um, uh, we sometimes um, overlook the global campus. We make every effort to make sure the next president never does. While you may be adding questions, I want to uh, thank you all again uh, for joining us here this evening. I see 
Uh, some of our search committee members have tuned in just to hear your thoughts. Um, so we're uh, very thankful for you taking the time tonight. I'm interested in seeing where the new president takes our $1 billion campaign. Um, what I can say about that is we have already identified a couple of new areas, particularly the um, Elson Floyd College of Medicine, where we need to continue to focus on philanthropic gifts uh, to advance uh, that initiative. Um, uh, I guess I could tell you that um, uh, we were um, very happy uh, for Elson Floyd's leadership in uh, convincing us we can do things, particularly particularly in the fundraising arena that we had never achieved before. Um, and I would say that um, it would be our expectation of a new president that they would continue uh, to hold high standards and keep the bars high um, to move WSU in the right direction. Okay, so, uh, all right, got a couple more statements coming in here. This may relate to Josh's comment about loving the Cougs. I believe it's important to have a president that is a president of the people slash students, like Dr. Floyd, Dr. Floyd showed himself to be. Uh, that's absolutely right, and we've heard that feedback across the state. Um, definitely an approachable, um, humble professional um, is um, um, high on the radar. All right, here's another comment. Uh, this is from Kelsey. I would like to take that thought one step further not just being inclusive, but being proactive about the global campus so it can continue developing and not to become an out of sight, out of mind demographic. Um, I guess I can tell you that uh, you should have comp confidence that the leadership of the global campus uh, really does keep you all front and center um, in the minds of university administration and others. So um, um, uh, definitely um, uh, you've got great advocates in leadership roles at the global campus and um, and they're doing a great job uh, reminding everyone at WSU about the opportunities um, and um, innovation uh, that is the global campus. People are cheering Andrew while I'm here. Appreciate those comments, Andrew. Thank you. Okay, and Kelsey. Uh, thanks for your comments. Um, she says it's very encouraging to hear that the global campus will be front and center for WSU. I can guarantee it. Um, and Andrew, extending his thanks to me for taking time. That must mean he's getting ready to sign off. He's got something cool to do. Uh, Andrew, thanks for joining us tonight. Any other uh, questions to be added or thoughts uh, that we should uh, focus on before uh, we sign off here and you can get uh, get back to the books? Well, here's the last thing I'd like to add. I'm going to call attention to my last slide here. Uh, the uh, presidential search. Uh, oh, looks like John might have another comment coming. Uh, while he's getting his comment up on uh, up on the board, I want to point out the presidentialsearch.wsu.edu website, and we'll continue to post updates on the progress of the search. Um, and there is a mechanism there for you to, to provide continuing. Uh, commentary and uh, suggestions, questions for us. We review that um, uh, several times a day and we're very anxious for your continued feedback throughout the process. It says, will there be future forums as the search moves forward? Um, probably not in this type of format, but as I said, uh, we'll be posting regular updates to uh, the search website um, and welcoming continued comment about uh, the things that we learn as the search goes forward. The next step would be to begin advertising the position and to release the specific position description and the characterization of, as we discussed them earlier, the opportunities and uh, challenges that exist for the next president of WSU. Um, and hopefully uh, those documents will motivate uh, candidates to come forward. And here's a comment from Annette who's on our uh, search advisory committee. Uh, she thanks everybody for attending the uh, session and uh, says that your feedback is very important to us. Annette, thanks for joining us and for following us throughout the state as we did the live presentations on this um, same slideshow. 
Okay, I think uh, I think Laura Powell, um, uh, one of my Regent colleagues, is also on the uh, on the uh, chat. And uh, Laura, thank you for joining us tonight and listening in on the uh, feedback from the members of the Global Campus. Well, with that, we're going to sign off. Um, I'll say thank you. Uh, follow the website. We appreciate that feedback, and go Cougs. Thanks. <laughs>